In today's recap of Undercover Boss, we're bringing you two exciting episodes featuring the angriest bosses in Undercover Boss history. We'll first start with the CEO of Armando Montalago Companies, and then continue to the CEO of Shoppers World as they encounter bad situations and they struggle to keep their cool. And in our first episode, this boss will get so mad at a malfunctioning computer system that he blows his cover. The reason why I'm doing this is to get to know my business better what we do right and what we do wrong. We first start with the founder and CEO of Armando Montalongo Companies, Armando. Armando Montalongo, CEO of the Armando Montalongo Company. Operating out of San Antonio, Texas, real estate mogul Armando Montalongo is the single largest house flipper in America. Flipping 400 homes each year and leading educational seminars across the country, the Armando Montalongo companies racks in $75 million a year. Armando got into the real estate business right after the market crash in 2009. Home prices were cheap at the time, so he got all his money and bought rundown houses and fixed them up and then flipped them for a good profit. When he first started, he was only flipping one or two houses a month, but now he flips about 25 plus. But Armando's main business is to teach people how to flip a house and sell it for profit. They get thousands of dollars from one student and give a three-day course where Armando teaches his students the knowledge he acquired throughout the years. Armando is proud of his school, but not everyone is fond of it. News companies have called his school a get-rich-quick scheme, and his school has gotten the grade F. But this hasn't stopped Armando's growth and he doesn't plan to stop anytime soon. He wants to go undercover because his company has grown so fast in the last three years and he wants to branch out to the international market and before he does, he wants to see what issue his company is facing from the inside and fix it. He'll be going undercover as Kevin Jones, a contestant on a reality show competing to win money to start his own business. For his first job, he travels to Orlando, Florida to work as an electrician in one of the houses he's flipping. Today I'm in Orlando, Florida. I'm going to be working as an electrician in one of the houses that I will be flipping. He meets up with Angel and he first shows him how to remove old sockets and install new ones. Angel's instruction is not really hard to follow, but Armando hasn't done a physically demanding job for a long time and he starts sweating easily. Angel doesn't give up on him though and he makes him do the job until he was done and he also gives some constructive criticism to make him better. That's gonna solve the problem for you? Because guess what? You're just creating a bigger problem for me. Now I've got to replace that box. Now that's costing me more time. But Armando accidentally breaks a light bulb and Angel tells him to just take a break. The next day Armando travels to Riverside, California to go undercover as a student in one of the seminars. Today I'm in Riverside, California, where I'll be speaking at one of my advanced seminars. But this raises a major issue, as Armando always speaks in his seminars, and if he was going to be a student, he couldn't really do that without being recognized. So because of this situation, he hires a body double, and he teaches him his mannerisms and how he talks. What about the, you know... Yeah, so just everything's like this, round circles. Surprisingly, the body double picks up Armando's mannerisms pretty quick and was fully ready for the seminar. Armando then joins the class as a student and starts learning from the instructors while the body double walks around the stage and stays visible to the students so they can think twice when they see someone that resembles Armando between them. On their break, Armando talks to some of the students and he learns that the reason most people are taking the course is because they're financially struggling and they believe if they have this education, they can also get into the restaurant business and change their lives. One student named Shannon reveals to him that she paid $46,000 to be able to take the course and if the business doesn't work, she has nothing left. Armando sees how much people are trusting him to give them the best education and make them successful and this puts a lot of pressure on him. From talking to students, I realize how high the stakes are for us as a company to help them make their lives better. For his next job, he stays at the same place to work as an event room decorator. Today I'm in Riverside, California to experience my free preview events as a room director. He meets up with Sarah, who takes him outside, and they start their shift by greeting new students. While doing this, Sarah sees Armando's very stiff and not very inviting, so she shows him how to be more relaxed and to be more natural while talking to the customers. He didn't really know what to say, wasn't acting natural. I'm gonna get you a couple name tags here. Okay. 
Well, then after the three first classes end, Armando and Sarah talk to the students and offer them training packages. And one way Armando markets their packages is by giving students half-off prices on the day of the free classes. But if the students don't take it, the price will double next time. And this encourages the students to take the $1,500 package and the company gets a lot of students in one day. For his last job, Armando travels to San Antonio, Texas to work on the call center. Today I'm at the Armando Montelongo headquarters in San Antonio, Texas, where I'll be working in my own call center. He meets up with Amanda and she shows him lists of potential customers and teaches him how to convince them to attend the free seminar. Armando then starts making calls and talking to the customers, but the way he was talking was not enthusiastic, so Amanda instructs him on how to be more energetic and convincing. Armando then goes to make the next call, but the computer system stops working completely and Amanda tells him that this happens often, sometimes even for hours, which really hurts their output. This makes Armando very angry because he's never heard about this issue existing, even though he always makes it clear that he wants to know if there's any issue that was holding the company back. Armando wanted to end his shift, but first he reveals his true identity to everyone. I'm doing an episode of Undercover Boss. The reason why I'm doing this is to get to know my business better and asks to talk to Amanda in private. He asks her why the issue hadn't been fixed, and she reveals to him that the call center doesn't get support from the IT department, and since he was far away from this, he also doesn't give it enough attention, which worsens the situation. She also tells him that the employees also suffer because they don't get bonuses if they don't hit a certain quota, and they can't really meet the quota if they can't make the call. And finally, after this encounter, Armando's undercover time comes to an end, and he invites his employees to reveal his true identity. So guys, if you're loving this episode, just wait for the next boss, who for the first time in Undercover Boss history, witnesses a robbery in his own store. And now, back to the episode at hand. First to find out Armando's true identity was Sarah. He tells her that she was a good teacher, and he then offers her the director of seminar position, which comes with a good raise. He then gives her $12,000 to help her out, and also offers to send her to her dream vacation. I'm super excited about the future. I mean, I'm very grateful about the promotion. I'm very grateful about money giving me... Next in was Angel. He tells him that he appreciates his work ethic and then offers him a contract worth $500,000 so he can expand his electrical work. And finally, he offers to send him and his family on a fully paid vacation. My goal is to make sure that my children get a good education and expand the business to give them something. Next in was Shannon. He tells her he'll be paying her expenses and offers to pay for her first flip house up to $75,000. And on top of that, he gives her $25,000 to repair the home. And when she sells it, she'll be reaping the benefits for herself. I feel that our dreams can actually be fulfilled. I'm very excited. I can't wait to get it started. Last in was Amanda, and he tells her the issue when the call centers will be fixed, and he then gives her a 20% raise and offers to pay off her debt. Lastly, he gives her $20,000 to help with her financial situation. Gives me that confirmation like, Amanda, you can go far, you know, despite what you're going through, you can go really far. Let us now follow our next boss, the president and CEO of Shoppers World, Sam Dushy. I'm Sam Duche, and I'm the president and CEO of Shoppers World. Headquartered in New York City, Shoppers World is one of the nation's fastest growing retail stores. With 1,800 employees and an annual revenue of $250 million, Shoppers World is becoming a giant in the retail business. Shoppers World is a family owned business which was started by his Syrian immigrant grandfather. The first shop was opened in the 1930s, and from then, Sam's father and uncles opened their own shops, which grew the business. Sam Sam wants to go undercover because he's planning to grow the store from 50 to 500 in a very short time, and he believes that going undercover will help him gain new perspective. He'll be going undercover as Alex, a contestant on a reality show, competing to open his own store. For his first job, Sam travels to Queens, New York to work as a sales associate. I'm here at my Jamaica Avenue Queens store. This store started three generations ago. I actually... He meets up with Nalini, who takes him to the shoe aisle and tells him how to check every shoe box and make sure they're the correct ones. She then leaves him to do the job and even though he was slow, he does the job properly and they next move on to the storage area and she teaches him how to price tag new products and he does well on that job too. On their break, Sam learns Nalini has been working for the company for 8 years but she hasn't gotten any raises during her time. 
I work here for eight years and I haven't got a promotion, same pay. When I started working here, I used to make like 60 hours and then it cut down to like 28. And she also tells him that her shift has also been reduced, which makes her consider leaving the job, but since she has to take care of her family, she couldn't really risk it. For his next job, Sam travels to Morrow, Georgia to work as a sales associate. I'm here today from Morrow, Georgia at the South Lake Pavilion Shoppers World. He meets up with Char, who works at a boys' department, and she shows him around the aisle, and Sam sees that there are still back-to-school products put in the front. School has been open for a few months now, so these products should not be put in front. He then gets even more shocked and confused when he sees summertime products in the front as well. The summer is over. I should see outerwear, I should see heaters, I shouldn't see fans. I mean, I see all spring merchandise. Char then tells him to pick an outfit for the mannequins, but Sam knows the company sends manuals on how to pick the right outfits, so he excuses himself and goes outside to call the operation director. He then tells him all the issues that he's encountered and orders him to come to the store and fix the issues immediately. For his next job, he travels to Cleveland, Ohio to work as a sales associate. I'm here in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm going to be working with one of our sales lead associates in our children's wear department. And he then meets up with Carol, and she first teaches him how to scan price tags. Sam then starts doing the job, but he messes up, and the machine locks him out of the system. Carol then restarts the machine, and while working together, they hear the store alarm going off. He asks her what was going on, she reveals to him that someone had just stolen from the store, but unfortunately they were too late to catch them. He then asks her where the security is, and she tells him that there are none, and that the employees are supposed to catch the criminals. Well, where's security? <laughs> where's the security? Sam then meets up with the associate manager, Amy, and she reveals to him that two lady suspects stole some products. She tells him since there's no security, they can't do anything about it, and she also informs him that this happens once or twice a day, but the company hasn't done anything about it. Sam is shocked and angry to hear this, and he immediately calls the regional manager, Mark, and orders him to get security guards for the store. For his last job, he travels back to New York to work as a cashier. I'm here today at Pitkin Avenue in one of my original Brooklyn stores to work behind the register with one of my cashiers. And he meets up with Denisha, and she teaches him how to scan price tags, get payments, and print receipts. Sam then starts doing the job, but he finds out that some price tags don't scan properly, so they will have to be done manually, which slows the workflow a lot and also wastes a lot of customer time. Customers are driving to the registers with tons of merchandise. If there is a slight hiccup, that's a major problem. And finally, Sam's undercover time comes to an end, and he invites his employees to reveal his true identity. First in was Char. He tells her that he had fun working with her, and he gives her $10,000 to help with her financial issues. I've been praying for something like this to happen. I really feel like everything is gonna be okay. Next in was Nalini, and he tells her the way her shift was cut was not fair, and he gives her a full-time job, and then makes her the head of merchandising for her department, which comes with a $15,000 raise. He then gives her $20,000 to spend on whatever she likes. I'm finally gonna be able to help my parents more. I can finally have my dream wedding. Like, when I walk down the aisle, I always think in my head, it's because of Sammy. Next in was Amy, and he tells her he was shocked when she told him about the lack of security and how much of a risk the employees were in, and he then informs her that he'd invested $1.2 million to improve the security in his stores. He then tells her everyone in her store will receive a $5,000 bonus, and for her, she will receive $15,000. That has been paycheck to paycheck for forever. This is going to change my life in so many ways. Next in was Carol. He tells her she was a great employee and then gives her $20,000 to put toward her retirement. I'm just overwhelmed at the generosity of Mr. Sam Dishon. Last in was Tanisha, and he tells her he was the most impressed by her, and then gives her a full-time job and $10,000 to help with her financial issues. They always say you always be nice to people because you never know. I'm so happy.